Hi, my name is Terry Etherton. I'm the owner of Etherton Gallery in Tucson, Arizona. Today I'd like to talk about a photograph that we're going to feature in our upcoming uh, Photo LA uh, virtual booth, which goes live uh, on the 27th of June. Um, the photograph I'd like to talk about is this, this photograph by Robert Frank. This is called Hoover Dam 1955. This photograph came into our inventory at the gallery uh, earlier in this year from one of our great collectors uh, in Pennsylvania. It's an unusual print in that it's 16 by 20. The vast majority of francs from this period are much smaller. Uh, it's clearly signed and stamped on the back. Um, a lot of you already know a lot about Robert Frank, so I won't read a lot about it, but I want to read a little bit of the introduction uh, from Sarah Greeno's book, uh, Moving Out, which was an exhibition in 1994 at the National Gallery, and the book was the catalog for that exhibition. So on the inner flap right here, she says, Robert Frank is without question the most important photographer to emerge since World War II. That's quite a statement. In the early 1950s, he pioneered an original and sophisticated way of looking at the world that has dominated the art of photography for many years. It was not simply the raw style of his work that made Frank so controversial, nor was it the subjects, gas stations, roadside cafes, or cars, which he explored in his highly influential book, The Americans. Rather, it was the combination of all of these things plus Frank's ability to express the loneliness and isolation so characteristic of our age. For more than 50 years, he has scrutinized his relationships to the social, political, and cultural landscapes of our time with uncompromising clarity and honesty. His powerful images have profoundly influenced successive generations of photographers, painters, filmmakers, critics, and writers. So now I want to read a passage from this book that, uh, that Sarah wrote. Um, because she can say it better than anybody else. Sarah Greeno is considered the authority on Robert Frank, and uh, for those of you who haven't read her, one of the great writers on photography, in my opinion. So this is what she says uh, regarding this photograph of Hoover Dam. In December 1955, while traveling through the United States on a grant from the Guggenheim Foundation, Robert Frank went to the Hoover Dam near Boulder City, Nevada. Earlier that year, he received funding for a highly ambitious project to make, as he wrote, a broad, voluminous picture record of things American, past, present, and create a visual study of a civilization. That book would become The Americans. Until then, he had avoided such obvious tourist locations, preferring instead to photograph more mundane sites, such as cafes, gas stations, or even the road itself. Perhaps he went to the dam because he thought this man-made wonder of the American West would amuse his young son and daughter, reliving the tedium of their long drives through the vast desert, or perhaps recalling the great dam's and tunnels of his native Switzerland, he was intrigued by this feat of engineering. Whatever the reason, before visiting the dam, Frank stopped at a small souvenir store where his attention was first drawn to a woman wearing a turban and a fur coat. Beside her, standing next to the magazine rack and postcard stand, was a life-size mannequin of a young boy in a striped shirt and hat, sporting a holster and guns. Frank made three exposures as the woman completed her purchase, then went outside only to be confronted by yet another display of postcards. Although he had frequently been assaulted with examples of American commercialism on his trip and had photographed quite a few postcard stands, this one was surely different. There in the brilliant, unforgiving Nevada sun on a small rack, next to a sign that promised tourists a pictorial tour of the dam for 35 cents, were three postcards that together comprised a succinct allegory of modern man. Reading from top to bottom, the first view presents a majestic vista of a vast, pristine canyon stretching as far as the eye can see, while the middle image is of the Hoover Dam itself. Depicting the remarkable formal beauty of this man-made form, the image also boasts an American flag proudly displayed in the center of the composition. The bottom postcard shows the detonation of a nuclear bomb in the empty desert. Separately, each of the postcards is highly celebratory. The untamed wilderness is just as awe-inspiring as the technological strength of the dam or the destructive force of the mushroom cloud. But because of their shared subject matter, man and nature, and because they are stacked one on top of the other and isolated within the center of the image, we're forced to see them in succession and understand them as a group. With eloquence, clarity, and brevity, the three postcards tell a multi-layered story. Most obviously, they speak of the desecration and destruction of a once pure land. More fundamentally, they allude to the megalomania of modern man, to his compulsion to conquer and control his environment, 
and to his newfound ability to harness nature both as a powerful force for positive change and as an agent of utter annihilation. Not only does this sequence have a clear narrative quality, but it also has an obvious linear progression through time. The unsullied landscape is the Edenic American past, while the dam is at present, is its present and the bomb its future. In addition, it has an emphatic moral lesson. Left unchecked, this is the future not just of mankind, but of all life on Earth. As a group, the series assumes an entirely different meaning and tone from that of the individual postcards. No longer a celebration of either man or nature, the three images together are at once a poignant requiem to the past and a profoundly disturbing omen. Um, so I've always wondered why Robert Frank did not include this in, in his famous book, The Americans. Sarah Greeno suggests that he didn't because uh, he, she, she, she says he thought it was too emphatic and didactic or its, turn, its tone too strident. Um, that makes sense to me, but I, it's, it's still for me one of the most iconic pictures that was made during his Guggenheim trip in 1955 and 56. So thank you for tuning in and uh, check out Photo LA, www.photola.com, um, and go uh, check out our booth.